Hello and welcome back to our ECSI video series. Today I want to just take a few moments to talk to you about a policy change we're making with ECSI as it relates to our lay responder adult CPR programs. We're going to be giving ECSI education centers and instructors the flexibility to deliver a course completion certificate based on a conventional CPR program, which is the delivery of chest compressions with ventilations and use of an AED, or a course completion certificate based on a compression only CPR model where the course participant would provide chest compressions and the use of an AED in the course, but would refrain from providing or even simulating ventilations. As you can imagine in these trying times, many individuals are unwilling to come to a CPR class to learn, let alone in a real event to provide care for fears of giving ventilations to someone who they don't know. We do know, however, that CPR, whether it be conventional CPR or compression only CPR for adults is very similar when it comes to outcomes. I'm not saying that ventilations aren't important, they are, but compression only CPR does provide benefit. And if we can provide a greater level of confidence to our student and increase their willingness to act, we feel that it is very important to at least teach compression only CPR and issue that course certificate to allow them to go to work um, or function in a way that requires that certificate and that they would actually do something should something happen with confidence. As we know, many CPR organizations have altered or changed their CPR programs over the last several weeks to months um, based on what's happening in the world. Some are having students just simulate breaths by saying breath, breath after opening the airway and then going back to chest compressions. From an ECSI perspective, we feel educationally that's not the right approach. That if a student or a course participant has never actually given a breath even to a mannequin by properly opening the airway, making a tight seal and giving a breath, there's no way they would understand what to do in a real life emergency just by simulating the words breath, breath and not breathing into the mannequin. So we're moving completely to a compression only model for those course participants those education centers and those instructors that want to provide the course certificate based on compression only. Again, it'll be the same course completion certificate, but you'll have the option of compression only CPR or conventional CPR based on your audience, the needs, and potentially the local regulations that may be involved in prov providing a CPR course completion certificate. So I talked very briefly about that this course or this program for compression only CPR is for adult CPR. I want to focus on just for a moment because I want all of our course participants and certainly all of our instructors to understand that compression only CPR for children is something that we would never encourage and never teach. Ventilations are critical for the pediatric population and while providing CPR and maybe chest compressions to a child may seem like the right thing to do better than nothing, from the evidence perspective it may actually not be. We do want for all our pediatric programs, those that teach infant CPR and child CPR, to continue to teach ventilation as part of the teaching process. That may keep some people away from the education center for those pediatric programs, but it is critical that for children, ventilations are taught, practiced, before a course completion certificate can be issued. But if the course is just for adult CPR, which is the vast majority of courses that ECSI um, completes on an annual basis, it's okay to change your program, eliminate the practice of ventilations, which actually makes your course slightly shorter, and really focus on actual time of providing good chest compressions, good integration of the use of the AED, as well as all the aspects around making determinations should CPR even be started in the first place. We hope this policy change will allow education centers to increase confidence and willingness of participants, as well as increase the ability for students to come back to the classroom and learn in a comfortable, safe setting. So continue to teach those classes, increase that confidence and willingness for students, and let's get people comfortable providing care in an actual emergency. Thank you, and we'll see you at the next video.